Wales is a patchwork of diverse habitats, from rugged mountains, boggy moorland and marshy estuaries. But there is one habitat that defines the Welsh and British landscape like no other. They are the largest semi-natural habitats in the UK, the leafy green threads that have held the diverse Welsh countryside together for more than a millennia. There are over 88,000 kilometres of hedgerows in Wales. That's enough hedge to stretch twice around the world. Hedges have years, said the old sooth, and every bush is something's booth. Silent as tombs, these creatures are so true. No gold, no gifts can subdue. The thoughts of 17th century Breckenshire poet Henry Vaughan. They are absolutely culturally, they're very important and historically as well. They're a real link to the past, a link to the people that worked in the countryside in the past and lived in the countryside in the past. Hopefully lamb a bit earlier, catch a bit earlier market, hopefully make a bit more money because the lambs will sell at a more, at a, at a better time of the year when there's not a glut of lambs. Hedgerows have got other values, um, you know, they act as carbon storage, they help with water drainage and things like that, which are just as important as in urban areas as they are out in rural areas. Although hedgerows form a lattice of habitat across large swathes of Wales, Wales has lost an estimated 25 to 30 per cent of its hedgerows since 1945. Immediately after the war, there was, of course, pressure on increasing food production, making uh, fields larger. Agricultural equipment got larger, um, tractors got wider. So sometimes narrow uh, gateways and hedgerows were removed to make bigger unit fields. Um, looking at old maps, looking at old photographs, you can see there are far fewer trees in the landscape than there used to be. There, there have been payments in the past to, to grub out your hedgerows to get larger fields. However, there are now efforts to arrest this habitat loss. With funding from Welsh Government's Nature Fund, a partnership has been formed with Keep Wales Tidy as its lead, alongside the Woodland Trust and the University of South Wales. The Long Forest Project is a way really of raising awareness and interest in our hedgerows. Um, it's a practical conservation project and we do a number of activities from um, practical hedge laying, which is a very skilled uh, task which people can learn um, in free training, through to something that is a little bit easier for perhaps uh, the younger members of the community. We do work with schools, which is looking at hedges, thinking about what hedges are, what lives in or around hedges and what sort of condition hedges are in. What we are aiming to do with this project is to reinforce the, the importance of hedges and ensure that the people working with them, so farmers and landowners, can sort of sustain them and, and work alongside each other to, to make them better. Some of the hedgerows the project has been helping to maintain, manage and restore are ancient. They have been planted on purpose um, for many centuries to create fields and to keep one set of livestock away from another. Uh, a lot of them were planted in the 18th century when uh, the Enclosure Acts came in and fields began to be enclosed. But some hedges actually date from much, much earlier than that. I think there are even examples of Neolithic hedges. Hedgerows are crucial habitats in the Welsh landscape for a myriad of species. Indeed, they are home to 47 species of conservation concern, including 13 which are globally threatened. And if you think about them, they're really connecting through vast areas of the countryside, vast areas of farmed land, and enabling the dispersal of wildlife throughout those areas, connecting up with, for example, areas of woodland, river corridors. So they're a really important way that, that wildlife moves throughout the landscape. Many species of bats use hedgerows and other linear features for navigation, for foraging, for roosting. Dormice are classically a species that are associated with hedgerows and woodland habitats. And again, hedgerows are thought to be as important as woodlands um, as a habitat for dormice. Hedgehogs as well are another species that are associated with hedgerows and they find um, really significant important cover at the base of hedgerows. And again, lots of good foraging, so 
hedgehogs will be finding things like slugs and other invertebrates um, to be fe feeding on in the damp sort of undergrowth associated with the base of the hedgerows, as well as finding a place to hibernate. Bumblebees are a species that have um, unfortunately under undergone significant declines over the last few decades and hedgerows are, th are thought to be an important um, habitat for particularly um, certain species of rare bumblebee. Hedgerows and particularly the margins associated with hedgerows provide a often quite a good diversity um, of flowering plants and not just a good diversity but a good diversity throughout the season that bumblebees are foraging so right from sort of April through to September. In terms of nesting and feeding, yeah, a whole variety of birds from typical wo woodland species such as, you know, blackbirds, wrens, blue tits, great tits, um, they'll all find uh, nesting and foraging in good thick shrubby hedgerows um, which provide good cover, um, good safety from predators as well as providing lots of insects and things to feed the young. The, the margin in particular of a hedgerow can be a very important resource and, and really is a sort of a relic of something that was much, much more widespread. Although the hedges themselves are crucial habitats for these species, there is one other important element of the hedge that is an iconic part of the Welsh countryside. There are an estimated 1.8 million hedgerow trees in the UK. They are an important part of the hedge ecosystem and significant habitats in themselves. So we've got a lovely old oak here. We've um, got a, a row of hazel. Um, in there there's also a young ash, there's also a field maple. And if you think that um, there's 275 species of insects that will use oak as a food plant, there's 252 that will use hazel as a food plant, I think 111 that will use ash. So there, there's a whole habitat both in each individual tree as well as in the row of hedges. Given that we only have 4 to 5 percent of our native woodland left in Wales, um, the habitat that hedgerow trees provide is hugely important, increasingly important. Not only are hedges a ubiquitous feature in our rural landscape, but they are also important habitats in the urban environment. As part of the project, the University of South Wales has been carrying out surveys in the grounds of Cavartha Castle, which is in the centre of Merthyr Tydville. There's only been a small deterioration in the condition of hedgerows across the whole area in the last 15 years, which is good news. However, what we have seen is we've seen loss of hedgerows, particularly through housing de development on the outskirts of the towns and villages. Hedgerows in urban areas are just as important as hedgerows in other areas, such as in rural and farming landscapes, because they do provide um, a harbour area for wildlife species but also they've got important community value and a lot of people like to see hedgerows in the area because particularly when they're well managed it gives them a sense of place and an understanding um, of the landscape around them. If people understand the importance of these hedgerows then they're more likely to be able to protect them and get them managed effectively. As well as providing important habitats for wildlife and connecting people to nature, hedgerows are also important in other ways. One of them being the prevention of erosion. If um, there's a big area without anything growing in it, the soil tends to get carried along by the water and goes into rivers and so on. So it can actually help to keep um, the quality of uh, the soil in fields. When you have a lot of rainfall, what happens is the, um, the water obviously runs into the ground and soaks into the ground. And what the hedgerows will do, alongside other species like trees, they will actually draw the water up and store it. And they will actually slow the rate of drainage into the water table. Stopping flooding and halting erosion of the soil is also important to farmers. Indeed, hedges are essential to farmers in one crucial way. Big hedges, good hedges, a shade. It's like having a shed. The sheep will t snuggle up under the hedge in the wind on the cold, wet night, and you won't get the losses. You loads of lambs are lost from from hypothermia, and if you can give any chance of protection. It's a benefit to me, isn't it? If they, you can save, you save one lamb, it, it adds up. One lamb a night, it all adds up to, to significant savings over a lifetime of a hedge. Hedgerows not only help save lambs for farmers, but the management and maintenance of hedges is a tradition and skill in which many farmers take a great pride. Uh, I've been hedging since I left school. Hedge laying is an art. And of course, they're all styles of hedging. 
We only go want to go to the next county from Breckenshire near into Radnorshire, where you've got a different style, different style again in Carmarthenshire. I wouldn't like to see the, the skill of the hedge in day out at all. Because once you skip a generation, it doesn't come back, does it? Management and maintenance has become a problem since World War II. As well as a 25 to 30% loss in hedgerows in Wales, it is estimated that fewer than 44% of today's hedges are in a favourable condition. Therefore, training and the passing on of knowledge is critical in reversing the decline. What we try and do with, with hedgerow management is to, is to avoid the bird nesting season, really. And, and that, that runs, it, it does very little bit, but pretty much from March until August is the time when you want to really avoid doing much management at all on, on your hedgerows. It, it, it's good to cut your hedgerow once every three years if you can. It's given it a chance to grow properly. It's always good to, to not manage an entire area in one go and, and the reason for that is it's very useful to have mixed habitats. It's good to have a different age structure so you can have some young hedgerows, you can have some older hedgerows, some thicker hedgerows, some bushier uh, hedgerows. Again it creates that variety of habitats which is so important for wildlife. The types of plants that you want to put in there, the native trees really, will depend on the, what you're really looking for on your land. If you've got a lot of livestock, you know, you're, you're likely to have a much higher a proportion of things like hawthorn and blackthorn. But if you're interested in, in, in having a diversity of species, there are lots of different wildlife hedgerow packs that you can get a hold of and from people like the Woodland Trust have great mixtures. As well as teaching management and hedge laying skills, the Long Forest Project has also provided farmers with support to plant new hedgerows. I saw an advert in the local paper for um, this Long Forest project, hedge, hedge and plants, contribution towards it. I thought that seems a good idea and I could uh, plant some new hedges. This field here was, was two fields originally years ago and the hedges went and it ended up as one field. So what we've done, we've um, planted uh, 250 metres of um, hedge, new hedge and plants and trees down the middle of this field and the field back as it originally was, two fields. And I would say it would probably be the um, best part of 50% contribution to the cost of the project. The project supplied me with the plants and the fencing equipment and I supplied all the labour to, to put it all up. So it's, it was a big contribution to the job, yes. According to the Woodland Trust, Planting new trees is also a priority that cannot be delayed. Hedgelink UK has estimated that there are 1.8 million hedgerow trees in the UK and also that a third of those are over 100 years old. So whilst it's good to have many older trees because more species of animal will depend on those than on younger trees, we do need to keep renewing them. Many of our native trees are available from garden centres, but I would say always check that those trees have been sourced and grown in the UK because there are many pests and diseases outside the UK that can be brought in on imported stock. If more trees are planted, hedges laid and maintained with the help from initiatives like the Long Forest Project, we could all be more optimistic about their future. Lots of people who um, live in countries of the world that are too dry or cold or arid to have hedgerows really appreciate our hedgerows very much. The, the response that we've had has been really positive and hopefully something that we can do again just to in ensure we can sustain our hedges here in Wales. Imagine what it would look like if we didn't have any hedgerows uh, you know, within Wales, how, how much more poor would we be?